former governor of Central Bank, now governor-elect for Anambra State, uh, Professor Chukuma Soludo. Well, let's move on and then get on. Uh, we've got uh, Thomas Wilson, Dr. Thomas Wilson, Kubase, who is of the Yes We Fit Revolutionary Movement. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program today. So having observed the Anambra elections for some days and now it's conclusive from the entire what you glean from the entire exercise. Do you think that this gives some sort of hope or despair for perhaps those who may be a political to say, well, if the process is a little more improved, we may throw our hat in the ring? Yes, uh, first let me congratulate the winner, uh, Professor Chukuma Saludo. I will also congratulate INEC for uh, conducting this election and announcing the result uh, as at when due. That's a, that's a whole lot of plus for them uh, together with the new technology that is being deployed uh, into it. But in terms of the question that you have asked, maybe uh, the outcome and the conduct of the election will give room for more people to want to go into uh, elections in Nigeria. I think we still have a long way to go. Uh, number one, if you look at the outturn of the people that voted in this election, they are very few compared to the population of Anambra State. So that apathy, that fear, that inconvenience, I, I think INEC should work towards e-voting. Each time we talk about these things, we say, oh, we're not yet there. When are we ever going to get there? Okay? At the point in time where we advocate that cadre that they say it's not possible, but we are already achieved that. So we should be looking at e-voting, where I could sit in my sitting room without the fear of unknown gunmen, without the fear of violence, and I will just you know, vote for my candidate and my vote will count. And this idea that we've always had over the years, where we would need to shut down the economy for a whole day, sometimes two whole days, and lose millions and billions of naira because of an election, I think it's a case. We should be looking at a situation where election will be maybe two, three, four days, and then collisions are done on daily basis, like it's done in some developed parts of the world. You know, so having to shut down the economy is a problem we should be looking at. So INET should work towards that in next year elections. And let me also say this. People have talked about the fact that we have violence, we have fears, we have all sorts of things in Nigerian politics. I think we are not looking at the roots. The roots, Chamberlain, is that the people the Nigerian people have seen politics as the, the most lucrative business in Nigeria. It's a business where you put in a couple of millions and you get billions in return. It's actually the most lucrative venture in Nigeria at the moment. So what we need to do to make the political space attractive for the people you are talking about is to make the offices less attractive. How do we do that? Four points very quickly. Number one point is that we must have a situation imputed into our laws. The national assemblies can do it. A situation where political office holders and salaries like civil servants. No bogus allowances. Let them earn salaries. No extraordinary millions. Let them earn salaries in the scale of civil servants. Number two, we must have a situation in Nigeria where the income and expenditure of government is published on a monthly basis. So we know what comes into each of the state, we know what comes into the federation account and how it is spent. Number three, Chamberlain, is that we must have special anti-corruption courts that will complete cases of corruption brought before it within six months. No unnecessary adjournment. And number four, Persons who are found guilty of corruption of public funds to be sentenced to life imprisonment without an option of fine. Chamberlain and Ayo, if we are able to do these four things, we will succeed in attracting the people that will get into the polity of Nigeria and make it a better place. And even that way, our elections will be less violent because people will want to go in to serve. It will be a situation where I will say, boy, come and run or the office of the governor and say, what am I going to do with it? Because you know, you can't go there and steal. You know, you are going there to work. If we do what, just, just, just on one of the I'm points afraid. that you have <laughs> raised, um, uh, Dr. Kubese, just a second, uh, what, one of the issues that you have raised, and I think it tailors into what uh, the question Chamberlain asked you. The propositions that you have made, a number of people would say quite laudable. The question is, 
Who is going to legislate it? So if we do not have people who have such intentions as you are conversing now to, in, in the position to legislate such things, come in now before you know, we get to that uh, position and then they actually legislate these things and legislate to make public office less attractive. How is it going to be done? That's a very vital question. Maybe that's why some people are calling for revolution. Well, a revolution not by turning the system upside down, but by getting the people that we have elected, put the heat in their boom boom and get them to do the right thing. You and I cannot make those legislation. It is the people that we voted for at the national assembly level uh, that will be able to do this. But the way it is, they are so detached from the people. Now look at the Kulaba law that is going on on the issue of uh, direct and indirect primary. Everybody knows, without being told, that what we need to make the system work is to have the red families. Now, the people in the National Assembly that passed that bill, which is awaiting presidential action, they didn't do it because they necessarily like Nigeria, even though they know that's the right thing. They did it because they have been disenfranchised, and they feel by passing that into law, and the people who vote, they will be empowered as against the governor imposing, you know, persons on them. So whichever way it goes, it's benefiting the people. So it's still the National Assembly. So I think it's time for us, individuals, Nigerians, citizens, the common men, let's call out our lawmakers and tell them these, these, these are the things that we need. I think if we do that, we put the heat on them and we'll be able to get things to work. I think we've been too complacent, Ayo. We Nigerians, we are so complacent. Go on social media, we waste time, debate on things that are not necessary. If we do this as a people, I think eventually we will get there. We agree that this is something that can be done. Then the question of mobilizing people to get into that mindset, to that mental frame, you know, begins. You talked about the, uh, the turnout of voters. To a large extent... Um, people would seem to have lost interest or trust in the process. Hence, the continuous reduction in the number of people who come out to vote, irrespective of uh, whether or not the uh, voter register has been cleaned, as some people are still advocating. Championing that course of mobilizing people to, to take the destiny of Nigeria into their hands, especially the young population, that's a task on our hands. Trusting the process enough, trusting the system enough to say, I'm going to go out and vote, come what may, and ensure that my vote counts. How do we begin that process? Or do you think it has begun? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say it has begun. The reason why we have the apathy we're experiencing at the moment is because the people who feel What's the point going out to vote for the, in the first place? The roads are bad. Go through Nigerian roads. They are terribly, terribly bad. Insecurity everywhere. Your friend goes into politics and within six months he's building a mansion, he's buying SUVs, and you are here suffering. The system is not working. So those who are going to vote, they just believe, well, maybe there could be some miracle along the line. Let's just go there and exercise our franchise. And this is the reason why you find people who go to the polling unit and, you know, some persons come and give them money and they just take what they can get and they vote. And that's why I must commend the people of Anambra State. We saw a couple of videos, which I'm sure you also saw, uh, situations where some persons came to bribe them, give them money, 5,000 or I think, and asking them to vote for particular persons. And they said, no, this is the person you want to vote for. I must give kudos to an Ambrarian. So if you're an Ambrarian, I think you, you guys deserve uh, a, a round of applause. So, but the politicians will naturally impoverish the people so that when they come tomorrow and give you peanuts, the people will come out there and vote for them. So it's a long way to go. We still have a long, long way. And that's what we're doing at the Yes We Fit movement, getting the young ones, changing the orientation, imputing into them the concept of nationality, that we can make Nigeria work, but it must start from the grassroots. You and I not taking money to vote, you and I coming out to exercise our franchise and believing that if we do what we should do and discourage those who want to circumvent the system from doing it in our little way, little drops of water higher eventually will make a mighty ocean. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Thomas Wilson, the Kubasa, who is of the Yes With It revolutionary movement. Thanks for having me.
Let's take a look at some messages that came through from Jehovah uh, Yunus. Uh, Muhammad, you sent the very first one, uh, talking about um, the direct primaries. And Yunus says, 1999 Constitution of Nigeria gives the National Assembly inherent powers to make laws for the conduct of party primaries, party congresses, and party conventions. This power is captured in Section 228, Subsection A, Paragraph B, of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. Direct primaries is the best way to go. Festus yes, says about the Electoral Act Amendment, who is afraid of direct primaries? The passage of direct primaries in our Electoral Act will be a game changer that will bring democracy to the real people. It will also reduce corruption and bring sanity to our politics as politicians will be forced to meet and know the people they seek to govern. Only weak politicians who believe they can only win by heavily bribing delegates will be afraid of direct primaries. Okay. Well, Henry KK has this one. It says, we are evolving correctly with the passage of the new electoral bill by the National Assembly. This may be the biggest legacy of President Buhari and current National Assembly. INEX should build up from the Anambra election experience. Uh, Valentine says, what will happen next if the president declines from a sentence to the amended electoral act? Would he die there? What will be the next steps? Well, the thing is, the, the National Assembly can or may veto it, which uh, one of the members there did say. So it's not expected to die there. That's the thinking of some of them. He didn't say. The question he's asking is, will? So I guess it's back to the National Assembly, as you said. Mm -hmm. Bernard, in this one, says, I think the mode of primaries should be for a political party to decide at any given circumstance. What the parliament across party is trying to do is to remove the control of indirect primary from the governors. Indirect primary is for governors, while direct is for stakeholders, which the legislators belong. Mm. <laughs> Isimi Kaye Tayo says direct primary gives registered members of a party the choice to choose individually. So why are politicians afraid if they've really done well? Be question, Tayo. Uh, we'll see how the answers will come in the coming days. But we have to thank you all for watching this morning. I'm Maokbe Ogunyusuf. I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Chamberlain, sir. Goodbye.